Alright, the reason you gotta pull up mechanical front wheel drive pack is you got two bolts up in here too. And there's one hiding over here I already got out. That's that one we got through the side of the case. And there's one up here that I could probably get through this side. You got a hole here but the fuel tank's in the way. So you kinda gotta fight this one out. Usually this one ugh, ain't too bad. Man, this has got to be one of the filthiest fucking tractors I've ever seen. Just a filthy piece of shit. Oh, for shit. Charge extra for that. Well, let's see, what are we going to do to make life a little easier? One of the things we could definitely do is pull these damn hoses up out of here to where we can uh, get our impact wedged up in there a little straighter. Yeah, these things here are right in our way. They're not helping us at all. Let's try her now. The hell's dripping them hoses I just slung over the top. Hell yeah. yeah. <sighs> Come on, just uh, slide, you piece of shit, slide. fucking thing. Oh, what a piece of shit that thing is. Got the knuckle bastard out of here. Gee whiz, what a pain in the ass that bolt is. Whew. Now we're gonna hook the crane up to it and start lifting. See if we can get this thing out of there on the ground. Uh, I get frustrated when they're this greasy and nasty, and you know, golly, you gotta take a damn chisel and a hammer to get the grease unpacked around the bolt head so you can get a socket on them. go home and turn the shower completely black from all the grease in your fucking hair and uh, it's a little old sometimes all right let me uh 
back up here and see if I can get hooked up to her a little bit. Make sure I don't have a dog laying underneath the tire or something when I get run over. They're probably in the cab sleeping. It starts getting cold, them, them kids, they don't get too far away from the heater. We got sis. Dogs been in here farting. God, you stink. Uh, uh. We'll take our stabilizers and crank them down. Hey, Duke. Huh, buddy? I know, I want to go home too, but we got to get this thing out of here at least. We'll go put our tracks on our. 750B tomorrow, and then we'll come back here after we get that done and disassemble this IVT. Find out what happened on it. Guess I ought to find a chain, huh? Be nice to have a chain. All right, let me get some of the tools off the tractor and put them on the bumper of the service truck. All right, I need to find a chain now. I know where one's at. Look out, buddy. Some old dogs, they hate winter time in the shop. They're all cooped up in here, nothing to do. And oh. Looks like I need to go to the other side so I can get a hold of it. Together or something. I think I got a hook over there on the back. We'll find that hook for it. Alright, let me go find a hook. Alright, so we got a little tension on her now. Maybe I ought to go. Well, I thought I had some tension on it. Maybe not. Oh, these things can be kind of a booger to get out of there. Come 
very far forward with it. There just ain't nothing there. Oh. possibly get. I should have pulled that filter off of there, you know what? I'm going to have to pull that filter off. It's going to interfere with stuff. filter off of there. You're going to make a mess when this transmission has to come out at an angle. So one thing I learned is take a bar and just keep constant tension on it on the back. Uh oh, what was that? that popped. Not making me feel too damn good. What the hell is going on here? I say that. Usually you just keep a little tension on there while you're lifting on it. Oh, I see. It's up against that cooler right there. It's a tight fit, this thing is. It is a tight fit the whole damn way. Remember, every time I do one of these, I have a hell of a time getting them out. There it goes. They are tight. Getting them out of there. Tighter than hell. Should be getting pretty close to having her whipped. close actually. I remember it's a pretty good angle. Getting it out of there. Alright. I think we're there now. A pain in the ass. <sighs> and I should have pulled these hoses out. Forgot about that. Now they're trapped in there. God damn, why don't they leave you some room on some of this shit when they're doing this? Probably gonna have to take all that shit off of there so I can get this out. God damn it, man. 
There's one thing, it's a hundred others. This one's got a bolt broke off in it or something. Oh, it's got an Allen in it. We get an Allen wrench. Get that son of a gun out of there. Get a bunch of floor sweep and sop up the oil. side now and oil drizzling shit everywhere I don't know why it bothers me so much I've been doing it for years it's just the way it is what you can do about it oh shit Ground cable got around that filter housing there. I didn't see that. Son of a bitch. I got some other cable down here now. Oh, it's more their GPS stuff. What the hell did they got going on here? We got some cable running to it. Oh, that's that steering. That's that steering stuff right there. I got it wrapped around one of the lines. This is kind of like working on a pickup when somebody puts a bunch of aftermarket shit on there. It ain't supposed to be on there. It sure makes for a longer day. Especially when they route it like that and they wrap it around lines and Some bitch out of here. Let's see, I think I'm gonna go put it over here. Let's go out.
I'll get a box, put it on this end here. I got a hell of a mess to clean up now. I've always got a mess to clean up. I'm always doing something. <laughs> my old man, my old man always told me because you never would make a mess if you didn't do anything. Bags of floor sweep and dump under there now. Well, guys, there's our pretty bear without that in there. Park lock looks like it's in good shape, no teeth missing off of it. These IVTs don't usually have much of a problem. And I'll tell you what, them damn uh, mechanical shifts, you know, they can actually, they can actually slam one of those in park while it's moving. And I've seen quite a few of those mechanical park locks. I've seen quite a few of them get broke. Well guys, that's it for this round of video until we disassemble the IVT I gotta get a bunch of floor sweep and start cleaning up in here so until next time well we got this transmission standing on in we got our lines off it went up to our park lock control from our from our uh, filter housing here pressure control block is what they call that they got a fancy name for everything I don't know if you can see that I'm trying to find my flashlight Look at all the brass. I turned it right side up and you can see all the brass filings and shit on the floor there underneath it. Well, you can see that. Something took a shit in there. We're going to find out what it is. Well, get it rigged up, I think, good enough. We're going to see if we can accomplish something here. <coughs> Put a little bit of, a little bit of tension on her. We got a little bit of tension on it, and I don't really see the gap splitting anywhere yet. Let's make sure we got all the bolts out. There was some that were in the case the other way. An electrical case connector. I think you got to push that through when you're pulling that. that through and these three here were right side up in the case I don't see any bolts anywhere so I got a few wedge points here I'm gonna leave my screwdriver right now in the well all right she broke loose there It's not going to work too great, I don't think. I'm hitting that case connector. Alright, let me get my flashlight. I remember reading in the book that you had to help kind of push that case connector through. It didn't really seem like it's wanting to push through, though. Should I try to tap on it? No, I'm afraid to tap on it. But 
Yeah, there it goes. Making a little headway on her now. A little bit more. Ah, oh, shit. Not quite rigged up the way I would like it to be. I mean, I couldn't find another spot there. And I was happy with it. It was real good and centered. Wedge point here. or something over here. That's what it's acting like. There it goes. Hung up on a dowel. And this case connector. Make sure that that... Oh, I shouldn't be sticking my fingers in there. It's probably not a good idea. like it wants to do it. Case connector is out of the way. <sighs> Looks like I don't see what's so complicated so far. <laughs> it's just, just clutch packs and clutch drums and there's a the hydrostatic unit there and they're making it sound like it's some kind of rocket ship to the moon. Then we got to get the other side flipped over, but let's look at this side real quick. This is our output side right here. Bearing looks good. It's just a clutch pack. I mean, that's all it is. It's a clutch pack. I mean, what the hell is so damn complicated about rebuilding the clutch pack? I don't get it. Look at all the metal shavings down in here. Can you guys see that? everywhere I mean I don't see anything that completely went to hell here so we need to flip the input side over and see what we've got going on the other side I got a feeling the input side took a shit how about the splines this is PTO PTO is working so I don't think there's no problems there that all looks good There's one of your speed sensors down there. Well, shit, we gotta find the problem because we definitely know that something went to hell in there. You know, what we're seeing so far. I knew when it was, you know, the speed sensors were the mismatch because I've, I've never had to change one of these speed sensors on one of these things. Never. You know, and I called my buddy that worked for deer for 25 years he's out on his own too and got a second opinion from him he says I've never changed one he said uh, he said transmission screwed up and I said yeah that's kind of what I'm leaning towards all right well 
just remember when you're pulling the case ass if you want to look at your IVT uh, if you want to look at your IVT make sure that you you pull that case half the case connector don't just start yarding on it and rip the wires in the case connector in two but uh, I mean guys so far I mean I haven't torn one of these seven small frame tractors apart but this there's this ain't no rocket ship to the moon this is your directional clutch pack Ford and reverse right here so this is a clutch pack right there and there's your PTO shaft All right, so we got to get this thing flopped over. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to figure out how I'm going to do this. Well, guys, I made a decision that I'm probably not going to go much further on this input housing, but I'll show you what I think happened. I think the hydrostatic pump or the motor went to hell on it is what I think happened. Um, based on all the metal and material I'm finding in the bottom of the case, I don't see anything right off looking through the the gap here but this is your VG disc your brake disc this is your 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 uh, shift turret here C1 C2 C3 C4 clutch backs those are all your range packs that's directly spined to your input shaft um, this is your hydrostatic control unit right here and I just don't see anything right off I it's got to be, you know, and that's what the service manual said was going on with it. it. said that there was a malfunction in the hydrostatic control unit. And I saw a lot of brass looking filings, so it must be something in there with wear plate or something inside the pump or the motor that something probably just got worn out. I mean, it's got a ton of hours on it. So, yeah, we don't want to tear it too far apart. And then those guys see kind of evidence if we completely tore down. Oh, we're not going to avoid, we're going to avoid your core, you know. We're not going to give you your core back now. So, we probably ought to just uh, put her back on her. I mean, I I don't know why they don't see sell kits to rebuild these. This would be simple. I, mean, I don't see, there's nothing. Compared to that power shift I did on that 9320, this is a cakewalk. I mean, pull this bearing cup, this brake disc housing off there pull the clutch pack you know out of the son of a bitch rebuild all the packs in it and buy a new hydrostatic pump and motor stick it back in it and away you go you know put new bearings in it that's all i don't know they don't look like that big a deal to me but let's go outside for a second and look see what we got going on outside because it was snowing like a dirty bastard when i pulled in here this morning and wasn't sticking yet though. <gasps> yeah, it's white. Yeah. I think winter's here. I had to put cab mounts in that international truck this morning. Got that done. This is the Case Magnum tractor I was telling you about here. This uh, MX210. <sighs> this one's got your re. It's a 2014, but it's got this same thing as the new Holland tractors. You know, it's got that park lock control box on the back here. It's this box right here with the cable going down. And I don't know, he's mess with it quite a bit and adjust it underneath and he could never get it to quit doing it, it keeps throwing a 12188 code i gotta mess with that thing not today i think me and the old dog are gonna go home early for once in a once in a while and sit by the fire piss on it so well i'm going to get on the phone and order a transmission for this 7320 come on sweetheart come on Days, come on. Come on, babe. Come on, honey. I know. Let's go. Come on, babe. Well, let's put our stuff up and go home. All right, guys. Well, till next time. But that's that's your IVT transmission. You know, it's not that big of a deal, really. I mean, you know. I don't know if you guys remember the old 686 International Hydros. I mean, this is not a new concept by any means, this IVT. 
I mean, they're trying to make it sound like it's some kind of new... It has some features that, you know, of course the 686 Hydros didn't. They didn't synchronize that. I, there was no way electronically to synchronize the output and input speeds of the the uh, the hydrostatic control unit versus taking the clutch packs in and out with clutch modulation, you know, and controlling all that the way they do here to make it a seamless shift to where it, you never feel it. Because these IVTs, when you're shifting ranges, you never feel it. It makes your when it's pulling one clutch pack out, it makes sure that the speeds are exactly right and they're synchronous before it puts the other pack in while it's taking the other one out and you never feel it. So, uh, and that's all achieved by the IVT, the hydrostatic control unit, speeding it up or slowing it down. That's how they achieve the synchronization. So, and these are set up, I mean, they're similar to the 7830. The 7830, uh, you'll have a big right there on the front the input side of the transmission you'll have a big i mean on the 7830 the hydrostatic control units the size of this whole son of a bitch here i mean it's it's the hydrostatic control module is a big case and you take the case down you flop it down like this and you pull it out of the case and change it out and um and back behind it where it attaches to the rear end housing is the range transmission and the packs are back there so it's just set up a little different same principle though you know, so, well, I'm going to clean up a little bit here and sop up some of the damn oil and we're going to head out. So, till next time.